against all the questions the internet can conjure, all the science fiction mankind can produce, we will send onto them only you. Science and tell until it is done. Okay. Now entering the facility. Very few video games have ever made me feel as cool or as powerful as Doom. I especially like how in the more recent entries in the series, how much they lean into the Psy in their Phi. It leads to some truly ludicrous moments, like this moment in Doom Eternal, where they literally blow a hole in Mars. How much energy would it even take to do that? How powerful is the BFG? Arya Hayden will take us in. Beep boop, I'm a tall robot now. So here is the scene in question. Doom Guy is on Phobos, a moon of Mars, but he has to get to the center of Mars to reach an ancient city. So what does he do? Well, of course, he manhandles the BFG 10,000 with a pull of a trigger, bam! There's a hole in the planet below. Since we're not just Doom guys, we're science guys, how should we go about initially estimating the energy of an event like this? Does blowing a hole in Mars actually appeal to the male fantasy? <laughs> yes, Arya. Embracing wanton destruction and a lack of introspection is totally healthy for, uh, us. Hmm. To find the energy and the power of the BFG in this scene, we need to estimate how much material it is affecting. To do that, we are going to compare the hole created in this scene with a high-resolution map of Mars from NASA. It looks like the hole is almost the exact same size as this crater on the Martian surface, which has a real-life diameter of around 110 kilometers. Doom Eternal says that this hole goes all the way to the core of Mars, so we need the radius of Mars, which is 3,390 kilometers. To make things as simple as possible, we're going to assume that this hole created by the BFG is basically a cylinder, the volume of which comes out to be 32 quadrillion cubic meters. The average density of the Martian mantle is around 3.5 grams per cubic centimeter, so in total, the BFG 10,000 has to move 14 quintillion kilograms of rock in just a second or two. That's like obliterating the third largest asteroid in the solar system in the blink of an eye. It's a lot. 10 to the 20 kilograms is a lot of material for the BFG to get through, and it looks like it does so with a single massive laser pulse that vaporizes a hole in Mars. Now, if that's what it is truly doing, then it's going to take an unholy amount of energy to do so. Unholy, like the idolization of masculinity that equates physical strength with personal worth? Uh, yes? Hmm. It looks to me that Doom's BFG-10,000 is actually just a giant laser weapon, and if it is, then it's removing material from Mars via vaporization, or putting enough energy into some material to turn it into gas. You know, vapor. How much energy it takes to do so depends on the material. For example, take an ice cube. No, that's the guy, Arya. You're telling me this Doom guy likes little rabbits? No, that's ice tea, Arya. People. Take an ice cube. To make it into vapor, you first have to bring it to its melting point, which takes some amount of energy. Then you have to give it a little extra kick to make it change phase from solid into a liquid. Then you have to take that melted liquid and bring it to its boiling point with more energy, and then give it another kick of energy to make it change phase from a liquid into a gas or vapor. Thankfully, when it comes to vaporizing Martian rocks, a lot of the math has been done for us. Or at least, we can estimate it. Instead of getting stuck in math hell here, we're going to use numbers for the vaporization energies of rock that the mining industry has already calculated for the lasers that they use. That energy seems to be around 30 kilojoules per cubic centimeter. Remember that we have to get through quintillions of kilograms of Mars. So multiply these numbers together, and we get a minimum total output for the BFG 10,000 in Doom Eternal of one octillion joules. Imagine that you constructed a Dyson sphere around the sun. This is the amount of energy that it would collect in total over two seconds. That's ridiculous. 
If we're staying sci-fi, the BFG is still around 100,000 times less powerful than the Death Star, but we're not obliterating a whole planet, just making a hole in one, so I guess that makes sense. Note that we are making a lot of estimations and averages and assumptions here, so to check our numbers for the Doom game, we are going to play a different game. This is Universe Sandbox, a fantastic science and physics-based space simulator where you can do pretty much anything that your heart desires. We're going to use this game today to simulate what might happen in the Doom Mars scenario. But just as an example of what you can do in this fun game is, uh, let's see, let's give Earth some extra moons and see what happens. How about three? <laughs> oh, no, oh, God. Oh. And, yep, everybody's dead. Or let's see what happens when you delete the sun. Surely one run-of-the-mill star won't have that much effect on the rest of the planets if it suddenly disappears. Oh. You can actually see ice forming on Earth as it gets colder. You see the surface temperature rapidly dropping? as Earth is flung out into the cold expanse. And you can do some fun sci-fi stuff like shooting lasers at planets. So what we're gonna do is zoom into Mars, select an appropriately powered laser, just like the Doom's BFG, and then we are gonna see whether or not we can make a crater or a hole to the core of the planet like you see in the game, or if things get a little bit more complicated when you try to replicate them in an accurate way. Let's start by zooming into Mars. We're gonna zoom into our target, which is right here. What we wanna do is make sure we keep an eye on this region right here to see if its elevation changes. That means we have made a hole. Now we are gonna select our laser, and funnily enough, the Galactic Empire Super Laser is already one of the options that we can pick, and it's already green, very BFG. However, this is actually too many Yada Watts. We just want 1,000 Yada Watts to match what we calculated. So we're gonna set that, and then we're gonna go to the selection on Mars that we want to monitor. Remember, we want to see what displacement or change in elevation actually happens, and fire. You can see for just a second, for fractions of a second, we go to many tens of thousands of degrees Celsius. We zoom out here, and if we speed up the simulation a bit, we can see how that energy dissipates outwards. You can see how regions of Mars are melting. And if we speed up even more, you can see that dissipation of energy Celsius rapidly going down as the planet radiates some of that energy back out into space. However, you will notice as we go back down to real time that the displacement didn't change at all. The elevation and displacement didn't change at all, even though we used the appropriate amount of energy. If we even zoom out further here and close our laser, we can see that we blew a bunch of material out into space, whether that's melted ice, superheated atmosphere. Some of Mars is now in space because of our simulated BFG shot. But what we don't see is any change in elevation here. Why? Well, that's because laser drilling doesn't work in an all or nothing kind of single laser pulse like you see in Doom or you see in Star Wars. No, laser drilling needs to happen in many pulses because lasers can get held up by the material that explodes out of this ablated process. It can get caught up in the smoke and other material. So really you need many, many, many pulses to affect the Martian surface. So let's see if we can do something that's not quite like Doom, but does achieve achieve what we want to achieve. So we're gonna go back to our laser weaponry. We're gonna make it much, much more powerful than the BFG just to see if we can affect the surface of Mars. Again, we want to inspect this target region specifically because that's where it hits in the game. What we're looking for is a change in elevation. We're looking for a hole in the surface of Mars, as Samuel Hayden would put it. So let's go back 
to the laser weapon. And we have about 25 seconds to one second in our simulation time. And bam. 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 If you look over at what's actually happening in this physics simulation, over here, our elevation is actually changing by many hundreds of meters, meaning that we are blasting material out into space and we are heating up the planet a significant amount. The other thing to notice is that even though light doesn't have mass, it does have momentum. And we are hitting Mars with so much energy, watch this, it's actually being pushed out of its orbit. Bam. Moves a little bit, bam. It moves a little bit. The other thing to notice is that the ice on Mars is turning into water as this happens. So we're losing 100 meters, 100 meters, a hundred meters of material, a hundred meters of material, a hundred, bam, bam, we're getting into, we're really making our way into Mars. But as you can see, even with this unbelievable, enormous amount of, oh. Uh, we destroyed Mars. We put too much energy into the planet too quickly to try to replicate what happens in Doom Eternal. Thankfully, this is just a simulation and Mars is totally still there. We don't have to worry about anything. I deleted it. Where? Where? Where did? Mars is gone. When we put our situation in a physics simulator, we find that Doom's BFG 10,000 blowing a hole all the way into Mars doesn't really work. And we know that for sure because that's not how effective laser drilling works in real life. You need many smaller laser pulses over time to effectively make that hole. And that's because lasers can interfere with themselves. The material and the smoke that you create via vaporization can actually get in the way of your laser beam. But slowly drilling your way into the surface of Mars is not nearly badass enough for the Doom guys. So, I see why they did what they did. I'm just giving him some numbers to work with. Administrator. Don't rip my head off. The Doom Slayer has breached the facility. Oh, no! He just wants a hug. Oh. You see, strength can be vulnerable sometimes. And that's okay, I just learned something about myself. Beep boop. Until next time. Now exiting the facility. Thank you so much to the very nerdy staff here at the facility for their direct and substantial contribution to the making of this episode. If you want to join the facility, if you want to drape on a only slightly bloodied lab coat, if you want to see videos early, if you want behind the scenes photos and videos, if you want a private discord where you can ping me at any time of day, go to patreon.com slash Kyle Hill and join the facility today. And hey, if you support us just enough, you get your name emblazoned in crimson, except not in every single video that we make, and we're so appreciative. There's hundreds and hundreds of you. I have no idea how I'm just gonna stand here and pass. The other thing that I think sci-fi has perpetrated in our brains with regards to planets and shooting lasers and things at them is that planets don't explode. I have looked this up before, and I've tried to do, you know, give sci-fi the benefit of the doubt, but there's no known mechanism where a planet could just explode randomly. Not like, you know, DBZ or something where the core of the planet's unstable, it's gonna explode. <laughs> that just doesn't happen. It needs to be hit with something. And even if it was hit with like a gamma ray burst, it probably wouldn't explode. It would just, you know, sterilize the whole planet clean, which is much more badass if you ask me. But who asked me, right? Thanks for watching.